Hello, my lovelies, and welcome back to Bedtime Stories with Celosia Crane. This week, we're going to continue with our Hans Christian Andersen series. And today, I'm going to read to you the story of the butterfly. There was once a butterfly who wished for a bride. And as may be supposed, he wanted to choose a very pretty one from among the flowers. He glanced with a very critical eye at all of the flower beds, and found that the flowers were seated quietly and demurely on their stalks, just as maidens should sit before they are engaged. But there was a great number of them, and it appeared as if his search would soon become very wearisome. The butterfly did not like to take too much trouble. So he flew off on a visit to the daisies. The French call this flower Marguerite, and they say that the little daisy can prophesy. Lovers pluck off the leaves, and as they pluck each leaf, they ask a question about their lovers. Thus, does he or she love me ardently, distractedly, very much, a little, not at all? and so on. Everyone speaks these words in his own language. The butterfly came also to Marguerite to inquire, but he did not pluck off her leaves. He pressed a kiss on each of them, for he thought there was always more to be done by kindness. Darling Marguerite Daisy, he said to her, you are the wisest woman of all the flowers. Pray tell me, which of the flowers shall I choose for my wife? Which will be my bride? When I know, I will fly directly to her and propose. But Marguerite did not answer. She was offended that he should call her a woman when she was only a girl. And there is a great difference. He asked her a second time, and then a third, but she remained dumb, and answered not a word. Then he would await no longer, but flew away to commence his wooing at once. It was in the early spring when the crocus and the snowdrop were in full bloom. They are very pretty, thought the butterfly charming little lasses, but they are rather formal. Then, as the young lads often do, he looked out for the elder girls. He next flew to the anemones. These were rather sour to his taste. The violet, a little too sentimental. The lime blossoms, too small. And besides, there was such a large family of them. The apple blossoms, though they looked like roses, bloomed today, but might fall off tomorrow, with the first wind that blew. And he thought that a marriage with one of them might last too short a time. The pea blossom pleased him most of all. She was white and red, graceful and slender and belonged to those domestic maidens who have a pretty appearance and can yet be useful in the kitchen. He was just about to make her an offer when close by the maiden he saw a pod with a withered flower hanging at the end. "'Who is that?' he asked. "'That is my sister,' replied the pea blossom. "'Oh, indeed? And you will be like her some day?' said he, and he flew away directly, feeling quite shocked. A honeysuckle hung forth from the hedge in full bloom, but there were so many girls like her with long faces and sallow complexions. No, he did not like her. But which one did he like? Spring went by and summer drew toward its close. Autumn came, but he had not decided. The flowers now appeared in their most gorgeous robes, but all in vain. 
they had not the fresh, fragrant air of youth. For the heart asks for fragrance even when it is no longer young, and there is very little of that to be found in the dahlias or the dry chrysanthemums. Therefore, the butterfly turned to the mint on the ground. You know this plant has no blossom, but it is sweetness all over, full of fragrance from head to foot, with the scent of a flower in every leaf. I will take her, said the butterfly, and he made her an offer. But the mint stood silent and stiff as she listened to him. At last she said, Friendship, if you please, nothing more. I am old, and you are old, but we may live for each other just the same. As to marrying, no, don't let us appear ridiculous at our age. And so it happened that the butterfly got no wife at all. He had been too long choosing, which is always a bad plan, and the butterfly became what is called an old bachelor. It was late in the autumn with rainy and cloudy weather. The cold wind blew over the bowed backs of the willows so that they creaked again. It was not the weather for flying about in summer clothes, but fortunately the butterfly was not out in it. He had got a warm shelter by chance. It was in a room heated by a stove, and as warm as summer. He could exist here, he said, well enough. But it is not enough merely to exist, said he. I need freedom, sunshine, and a little flower for a companion. Then he flew against the window pane and was seen and admired by those in the room, who caught him and stuck him on a pin in a box of curiosities. They could not do more for him. Now I am perched on a stalk like the flowers, said the butterfly. It is not very pleasant, certainly. I should imagine it is something like being married. For here I am, stuck fast. And with this little thought he consoled himself. That seems very poor consolation, said one of the plants in the room that grew in a pot. Ah, thought the butterfly, one can't very well trust these plants in pots. They have too much to do with mankind. <laughs> and that is the end of the butterfly. I hope you guys enjoyed this whimsical little story, and I look forward to bringing you the next one. Thank you for listening. Bedtime Stories with Celosia Crane is supported solely through her Patreon. If you are enjoying these stories, please consider going over to patreon.com forward slash Crane and becoming a subscriber for as little as $1 a month.